Hi, this is Paul on the Plane, and this is Part 4 of our Image Analysis Series of the Deep Space Climate Observatory, or DISCOVER, and its Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera, or EPIC. This episode, number 7 in our Faking Space series, will serve as our mid-season finale. Yes, hard to believe, but we're already halfway through Season 1. We've been building up to this reveal with our examination of the Earth rise and Moon images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, in Episodes 1 through 3, and then our analysis of the Discover Earth and Moon images in Episodes 4 through 6. Episode 7 here will bring the first six episodes together and tie them up neatly with a bow. If you may recall, when we were examining the LRO images, any picture that contained the Earth had a neat little box around it, and we mentioned that would come into play later in the series, right? So, here we go. If you watched episodes 1 through 3, you will remember this NASA website called Earthrised Reimagined. The link is in the video description again. What I want to point your attention to is the date the Earthrise image was captured by the LRO, which, just as a reminder, is a satellite we are told has been orbiting the moon for the last eight years, and although the LRO experiences 12 Earth rises daily, this is only one of a handful of images it has ever captured of the Earth. Okay, as you can see, the date was October 12th, 2015. Now, let's head over to the Discover website where the epic images are published for the general public, and we're going to navigate to that same date. October 12th, 2015. We are shown 20 images from the EPIC camera that day, and if we scroll through to the 11th image, it may start to look very familiar. Just as a reminder, we are told the Discover satellite that captured these images is approximately 1 million miles away, and is locked into a perfect location in space where the Sun's and Earth's gravity keep it positioned perfectly to always capture sunlit images of the Earth. So, we take these two images, the LRO shot on the left and the EPIC shot on the right, and lay them side by side, and what? They are identical. At first thought, maybe not a big deal, right? But to achieve this, the two satellites would have to capture these shots at exactly the same time. Notice the clouds are the same, and from the same line of sight in space and do it all from different orbits and different focal lengths, like 760,000 miles apart. If we take the epic image and tilt it like they did for the LRO image, and lay them side by side on the LRO image, you will notice both images have the same distances from the continents to the edges of the Earth, and the distance from the Earth to the edge of the frame on the left and the right are the same too. These shots being the same are impossible, and what are the odds that out of what, the few images the LRO captured of the full Earth over the last eight years, that one of them was taken at the exact moment in time as the epic shot. Furthermore, think about this. The LRO image was captured from allegedly 239,000 miles away, and it is showing the Earth as being completely lit by the Sun, right? That means the Sun, and the Discover satellite being locked into its position directly between the Sun and the Earth, was capturing images that day from a million miles away, both were directly behind the moon and the LRO at this point in time. Directly behind. If that were the case, why doesn't the moon appear in any images from Discover that day, October 12th, 2015? We should have another set of lunar transit images like the ones we analyzed in episodes 4 and 5. I think you guys are getting the picture now. There's only one logical conclusion if you compare both stories NASA is telling us here. The Earthrise image from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter was taken from the Discover series of images from that day, and a fake surface of the moon was added, we proved that in episode 3, colors slightly changed and published as if it were real. Same box size, same Earth size, two satellites supposedly floating out in space and at the same exact moment in time capture the same exact image, one from 239,000 miles away and the other from 1 million miles away. And the moon is nowhere to be found? Check out the image here again, with the moon having circled its way around to be between the sun and the earth. Where's the moon? To illustrate this point further, 
Here are images from timeanddate.com showing the position of the sun and moon during the lunar transit series from July 5th, 2016, and then compare that to what the epic image showed. And then here's the lunar transit series from July 16, 2015, and then what the epic image showed. Both of those do make some sense based on the images that we were given and what timeanddate.com gives us. Now if we punch in the date of October 12, 2015 into timeanddate.com and time it so that the sun is directly over Western Africa, like the LRO and the epic images appear to have been taken from, you can see the moon should be right there in the epic line of sight. If you think that the LRO was too low and was looking up at the Earth to get its shot, then the images would not have the same angle. Because the images from the two satellites are identical, both cameras would have to be around the equatorial plane, which means that the moon would have to be in the field of view of Discover. The epic camera field of view is also quite a bit larger than the Earth's diameter, a few thousand miles on all sides. But hey, since NASA is removing all backgrounds, maybe they've been removing the moon from their pictures too. We are told that this is how the moon's orbit works, and you can see how small an inclination its orbit is around the Earth. Compare that to this NASA diagram showing the epic camera field of view. We should have received a lunar transit series every month from Discover, and we should see the moon passing behind the Earth, approaching from you know one side and then appearing on the other side as it leaves the frame, when it passes through the epic field of view. Shoot, NASA even admits to calibrating the epic camera by facing the moon. But we never see it, except for a few days in Epic's history. And it's allegedly sending us images every, what, 30 to 60 minutes from 1 million miles away. Here's a picture from what we are told is a geostationary satellite operated by the Japanese meteorological agency called the Himawari. It captured the moon as it passed behind the Earth. How come Epic never captures the moon appearing from behind the Earth? Sorry, NASA. Your stories don't add up. We hope you have enjoyed the first half of Season 1 of Faking Space. We have a ton more in store for the second half of this season, which will resume in a few weeks. And yeah, that's right, I said Season 1, meaning there will be a Season 2. On behalf of Archer Sage, this has been Paul on the Plane. Thanks for watching.